this is a completely different topic. And originally it was planned that I do this presentation together with Markus Scholzwoll from Hegler Nut Tautology. Unfortunately, um, Markus is no longer working directly for Hegler. He has his own uh, business, Sintutech, and um, due to the changeover, it was somehow not possible for him uh, to join this meeting here in time. And that's why, uh, unfortunately, for him, I, and a uh, pr uh, pleasure for me, I have to do the presentation <laughs> by myself now completely. But nevertheless, we will start with that. It's all about um, an OPC standard that uh, we did in, uh, you, and with the help and the aid and the support of the VDMA uh, for the flat glass industry. I hope you know VDMA, that is this uh, uh, group um, that the, uh, for a machine manufacturer that is working Europe-wide and also worldwide. And uh, OPC is a um, basic standard open process communication, unified architecture that is existing also since ages. Um, a, a standard is also following international uh, rules and uh, that is um, uh, yeah, on many, many machines and we think it's important to have it here as well. So let's go into that. So, hmm? Okay, so I, I start at the beginning here uh, to, to motivate again why we did that. Uh, even though uh, already four years ago we started with the project and I had a short presentation four years ago on the GPD that we are aiming to do so. But uh, just for those that haven't seen that, a few facts in the beginning. And I can tell you, we achieved it, and there is already a published standard. So that's really a success story that I'm going to present here. So you say machines talk already, uh, and, uh, but the state of art of communication today is very, very much supplier specific. Every machine has its own language, its own interface type, even its own communication rules. Some you have. Uh, internet communication and there are some you need uh, an RS-232 plug or even a, a, a disk or, or whatever. So there are lots of different things in the market how to communicate with machines. And it often requires bilateral um, agreements between the MAS uh, manufacturer and the machine and specific implementation and you all know you get a new machine and you don't just plug it in and it works, it's cumbersome. Uh, we as a software company often are in a situation that we get a call, ah, we got a new machine, it will be delivered tomorrow. And we say, how we shall we get it working tomorrow? We even don't know the interfaces, maybe we have to do some programming. So that, that's, that's today's real situation that we have. We have all these machines here, but um, everything is different and that is a lot of uh, of uh, costs and things like that. So the idea is, what would happen if we succeed to replace it with a standard? Yeah. And I can say we really achieved to get a group together working on it and we have a first release of the standard published under the OPC. It's under the name 4301. You can read it. Why is this such a surprise? I can tell you myself, I was very, very often in the glass industry, in groups trying to establish a standard. I can tell you there were maybe one or two, one of them was me that wanted to have the standard. There were 12 others in the room just listening and preventing that the standard get established because they still want to keep their own rules. But now it's different. The first time, and I'm very proud being part of that story, we managed to get uh, major suppliers in the group uh, under that level, and you see all the names there. Siemens is involved, Hegler is involved, uh, the, the software companies, Lysac is in, Intermark, and, uh, and one thing more, we even got a customer, that means Scheuglas, you know, a German larger glass manufacturer, we even got Thorsten Brose from Scheuglas, who is the IT director there, to help us in the group. So the first time someone is actually using the machines, work together with industry specialists and software people to establish a standard. Never seen that before. Really proud being part of that story. And 
we did it, so we have something. Uh, it's, it has to be refined. It will take maybe still a few months to get it into the field, to get it used in the machinery. Okay, okay, okay. But even to reach this, ask me two years ago, I would have said no. So, what it is about? We thought about the problem, what we have to do in communication with machines in our industry, uh, the, from cutting to sorting, insulating, tempering, laminating, all these processes, uh, and uh, f thought about typical scenarios. So cutting is you have a big sheet, you cut it into several small ones. Insulating, you have several small ones, you glue it together into one. So you have one to N, you have N to one, and you have one to one, processing machine. A sheet goes in, a sheet goes out. All these things there, and we thought, what is common and how we can we get that into a standard? Then we saw what a standard like OPC requires. And we said then in the group, that is almost impossible. We will take 10, 15 years until we have it. And then we sit together and we had a brilliant idea, I think. We said we reduce the complexity by focusing on one aspect and keeping the others a bit lower just to get through. And with this idea we get through, we focused on the job control. The job control that says which machine has to do what in sense of a, of a job coming from the MAS and with the identification of the bits and pieces that go in. So a job control that has a knowledge of the serial number of the jumbo going in and has a knowledge of the serial number of the individual plates coming from cutting. That has a knowledge of the serial number of the individual sheets going into IG and the serial number of the IGU coming out. So that in the first place, when we have this running, we have traceability. So that was the focus, to have this running. And uh, I show you what came out to do that. But then we said, if we do this, and the machine can do that, we still cannot tell the machine exactly what to do, how to cut, how to score, and things like that. And this is, this is a complex part. And to get it that on the level of OPC, 10 years. So we said, we do a lower standard. We do on that level a VDMA specification, which is easy to achieve, where we define the rules, and use the, this here to send that as a, a closed pack through the machine. So the machine, this job with that recipe. But the recipe follows a simpler standard. And we succeeded to get this here in the definition that we are ready to publish that here as well. And when this is published, then we have everything in our hands to have machines in the field that actually do it. And that is pretty close now. So now, going a bit more into details, uh, into the job sending. So this is a certification. You can download it if you want, read it. It's a bit difficult to read, like standards are. And it's about uh, job management. That means there are some ingredients in, like uh, a digital nameplate. You, and, um, machine documentation, something that helps also to identify the machine. This is also part of that. But the major part is that you have a job list, a job management, a queue of jobs to do, where you can influence the sequence and things like that. That's, that's the core thing. And um, I can say, inside the VDMA, there are now about 30 or 40 groups defining OPC standards for their respective machinery part. And there is harmonization, because if everybody does the same, it's a problem, then we get too many different. So there's harmonization. And they came up with the idea that harmonization should look about jobs. And I can tell you, when they started to do the harmonization with jobs, as we had the good idea, we were the first one, and we influenced the whole VDMA to follow our rules for job management. Now it's going to be a VDMA standard for all machinery in the same way, so even better. So that's what we achieved, and a core part of it is uh, the state machine. Because if you talk to a machine, you need to have a, a, some uh, terms what this machine is actually doing. And um, that's why we, we needed a clear definition. And we said we, we load the jobs into the machine, and they first are in the state idle. And from there, we can, with methods, 
method calls, we can send them into a queue. And we have methods to change the position in the queue and to delete them again. So then the machine knows in which sequence to do what. And the machine, when switched on, can work accordingly. That means whatever is released can then, by the machine taken from here, into the running state. So then the machine is processing it. And the normal way would be the machine finishes, then it goes to end it. And when it's ended, it goes to the idle list again so that it can be deleted. But if we want, we could rerun it. So there are various transitions between these things. And we had quite long discussions which of these transitions are necessary, uh, what to do, for example, when it gets interrupted with, or aborted, which could be an operator pressing the emergency button. It's also an interrupt. Yeah, then you are somewhere here. Then you can go back if the condition is released. So this system doesn't need to do that. But it could well, very well be that after an interrupt, the decision is, well, I suspend it because I have to repair the machine. And from there, I send it back to queued and released again. So you see, the, 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 the key is that we have all these methods now in a way that for any machine, we are using the same commands in the same logic. That's a real beauty compared to where you are today. And uh, there's Siemens in the group, and I think we can convince the others as well. So I'm pretty sure that some point in the future will be part of the controllers. So this, this here, we have to pre present it for the glass tech. We have uh, written a demonstrator where we could show that we actually could send jobs from various uh, um, MES systems to various machines, and they all look alike. That was just to, to keep the ball running and tell the people that we actually do something. And what we had there, there was real, real uh, clients and servers connected together over the, over the cloud. We're showing kind of a proof of concept. OK, it's a bit of a hello world level. We are working on the next level. But we already started to refine it. And um, what I can say as well is, within the discussions, it turned out that this state machine here, there is a state machine following an ISO standard, which is similar, not identical. But we were in contact with the ISO organization. They agreed to extend their standard a bit. And now, with the, their extended standard and ours, we are able to map that. So the next generation of our uh, specification to come, where we are working on now, will be even on the level of an ISO standard, all identical for all machines. And then not only for class, but even on a wider scope. And, um, yeah, the specificity inside is inside the recipe definition. That is, as I said, this part. So in a few words, what did we do there? As I said, we wanted to have a lower standard, not on that high level. So we thought, what is the best human readable thing though, that uh, even in the field, when you send those instructions, someone can print them and just read them and understand what's going on. And there we thought, uh, it should be uh, JSON type, take value pairs. I'll show you in a minute. We focused first on cutting assembly and heat treatment because we thought that's the most important at the moment. Uh, when, but uh, the way how we work uh, and how we define it works also for other parts. And um, the last recent thing is we, uh, had a, we had a real good chance to get an Italian company working uh, we are for processing machines to join us so that we are able to extend this here and even use that as a replacement for, if you know what it is, ComDXF. So you know there's DXF, which is a graphic exchange format used for processing machines. And there's ComDXF, which uses the DXF and adds instructions in text layers. Uh, cumbersome to read, difficult, but it's not more existing at the moment. But with this, we are able to replace that. So we will have a one standard going from cutting to processing, everything. That's, and we are almost there. Now the first will be uh, released soon. In that case, it's uh, mainly driven by Gerald Ferringer from Lysek and me. Uh, we two were chairing that group, driving that forward. 
and Gerald did a hell lot of work there as well. So thanks to this cooperation, we have now results which we are exchanging between uh, Synasoft, Hanik, uh, us, Lysek, Higla. We are sending these instructions already back and forth, and each party receiving is checking if it's okay and sending back. So on a, on a test level, we have already the communication. It's not, not yet in the field, but on a test level, between all these companies, it's already existing. And that looks like this. A bit difficult to read, but yeah, a simple example here is a cutting pattern like that. How does it look like? The idea is to have easy to read things like tech value. Uh, this is JSON format. So it's easy to extend. You all, uh, this here, you just put a comma, you put another tag value. So it's, it's extendable, easy. And um, inside that format, uh, let, here you have, if you look here, this is a cutting instruction set. It says cutting instructions, and it has an output layout, which in itself has a width and a height and a rectangle. And inside the rectangle, you have a rectangle. Inside the rectangle, you have a rectangle. So a pretty simple type of structure. Uh, it's, it's complex. It can be really complex, but it's so logical that you can follow when you're used to it. And with possibilities to define global structures, like, for example, we have a global rectangle, which we refer to here. Inside that rectangle, we use the global rectangle. And this global rectangle itself contains a global product, which if you look here, global product. And this global product is just uh, has a cutting and an edge deletion path. That is this thing here. Can have, a, yeah? And all you have to do is to, you have a global product. And you, here, inside that rectangle, you have two instances of the global product. And with that, we have that definition in an artificial way. For experienced guys, human readable, and for the machine as well, understandable. And you can easily think that with this type of geometrical definition, you can do almost everything if you do it in the right way. We choose to, um, to use Google protocol buffers just as a term. I don't want to explain that in total detail. Uh, but Google protocol buffer is a language way uh, where we are able to define uh, the, the language syntax on a higher level so that uh, code can be generated automatically. So you don't have to sit and type all this. You just load the Google protocol buffer in, and then you have the structures to read and write such things automatically. And it's based on Google protocol buffer. It's very well proven internet exchange format, which runs with very, very low overhead. So we think that's a good way to do it. And uh, that's where we are at the moment, about to be released as a standard. Um, what else? Having this OPC idea in mind and knowing that there are so many working groups now inside the VDMA working on it, there's also machine and production monitoring, which is also following these standards. And uh, we are working in these groups also to get um, terms like um, uh, standard terms also used for, for machine feedback. Like um, also using for um, key performance indicators. And they, will be, they are defined in a standard way. There are other working groups working on it. But if it comes, we can easily load it. And you have this for every machine in the same way. So every machine having the same definitions for all these terms here, so that in the end, the software on top is easier to do because it all follows the same rules. That is to come as well. It's another aspect, but there are, as you can imagine, this is not extremely glass specific. Any machine wants to know processing time and, and uh, availability and things like that. So it's something where we definitely can wait for the, for the main working groups to achieve that, but they will actually do that. And from there, we then get all these details. In the end, um, Markus always talks from the moon landing, so we get the details so that we are on a level of control like necessary to do these, uh, these details. So 
Yeah, that's basically about what it is. Yeah, job response data. I give you another little example to show you how it could look like. So really, this response data coming back are following, as I said before, one to n or n to one structures. This is all included in the in the response, so that you can really see what happened on the machine. So, in a nutshell. We achieved the standardization, and this is necessary if you want to go to the next steps in industry. And the first interfaces actually visible in the field are in preparation that will not last very long. We are heavily working on it, and that really saves costs and minimizes risks. And I think it's not boring to work on a standard. Okay, thank you for listening, and I hope you follow these and see what will happen in the future. I'm I must say for myself, I'm proud to be part of that story. <clears throat>